What is up design family and welcome back to another episode on the channel as always so glad to have you lovely folks on here. On today's episode we'll be looking into the future and diving into the wild world of textile technology. For any of you designers out there you know that fabric plays a fundamental role in creating a phenomenal finished product and a holistic collection that your customers love. So how do we give ourselves the opportunities to use textiles that are going to enhance the functionality of the garments that we create and ultimately make our customers' lives better because of our products. Well, the answer to this is going to be textile technology and diving into this deep world of textile technology. That's exactly what we're going to be doing on today's episode. I'm going to explain what it is, how you can incorporate it into your collection and what different types of technologies are available to you and how you can use each of these technologies right now and into your next collection. Welcome to Fit Design TV. Are you interested in sports fashion, design, and manufacturing? Are you establishing your own brand? You are looking good. Anthony, how are we doing? Do you want to? Thank you. Well, you've come to the right place. Lights. Camera. Action. Textile technology. Textile tech. This is the process of enhancing the functionality of a garment simply by means of using technology within the means of production of any specific fabric. If we look at how most traditional fabrics are done, they are either knitted or woven from core fibers. But there's another step to how we actually engage with the textiles that we create. We don't only have to knit or weave, there's a variety of different finishes that we can apply. And this is what textile technology is. It's the act of using technology in order to enhance the functionality of textiles through the means of either mechanical or chemical different finishes. And there's a wide variety of different finishes. And these types of textiles have a direct impact on our customers. Well, understand, when it comes to your fabrics, your fabrics need to perform more than just the fact that they're covering the body. They need to retain the shape of the garment. They need to keep your customer feeling cool and comfortable all day long. They need to keep them thermally insulated. They need to keep a bad odor away from the fabric as your customer is sweating and using these garments day in, day out. There's a variety of different needs that textile technology can actually bring in and resolve simply by incorporating these unique touches and these unique finishes into the finished piece of fabric. So all is well and great, but what are some core examples of technologies or textile technologies that we can use today and that are available on the market? There are a ton, but I'm gonna give you guys some of my favorites. On the mechanical finish side, you can make your fabric softer and more supple simply by peaching it. This is the process of running these very, very tiny knives across the surface of a fiber or the fabric. And this causes these fabrics to get slightly agitated, causing the fibers to fuzz up a little bit, making the finished garment much more soft and much more plush. This also has the added benefit of breaking apart the fibers a little bit and making the fabric a bit more stretchy. On the other side, you can add an anti-wrinkle finish to your fabric. Let's just say you're making a smart, textile shirt for the modern man or the modern woman. And you wanna make sure that this type of shirt never wrinkles. You can just take it out of your closet and it's ready to go looking pristine and clean. Well, you can apply an anti-wrinkle finish. At the same time, you can then apply an anti-odor finish. If you want a garment that's going to smell fresh all day long, well, there's a variety of different options that you can use from different textile technologies in order to incorporate that anti-odor finish. You can bring in a hydrogen peroxide wash it's going to last X amount of washes and it's going to prevent the bacteria that cause those foul smells from binding with the oxygen on the surface of the skin and causing foul smells. You can also bring in bamboo charcoal. You can also bring in zinc ions. You can bring in silver ions. You can bring in gold ions. All of these are antimicrobial and anti-odor. You can also have a flame retardant surface finish. All of these different surface finishes allow your garment to bring more functionality, more usability. Some of the main ones that you guys will need to know are water resistant surface finish, waterproof surface finish, an anti-odor finish, a peaching or a softening surface finish, a silicone wash surface finish, and all of the above are going to give you a great opportunity to just bring in that added punch into your fabrics and make your customer's life that much better. I wanna get right into looking at some specific use case examples. Let's look at a compression shirt. If you have a garment where the fibers themselves are extremely shape retaining and they're able to apply specific amounts of compression simply by 
the types of yarns that are used or the types of finishes that we use on these yarns and in the finished knit or in the finished weave. Well, compression garments all around have a multitude of different benefits. And I've done a separate video in the past that I highly recommend you check out, but just know a couple of them are going to be improved recovery simply by putting stress on the muscle. You promote blood flow to that muscle, which then oxygenates and brings in much needed nutrients for that muscle to recover quickly. Also makes the wearer feel better because you're creating a better silhouette and an overall better appearance to the person wearing this garment. Compression also has the added benefit of creating a skin tight surface finish, which in certain scenarios like cycling and running wear is going to come in handy because you're going to be reducing wind resistance. This is a compression top. But what other types of textile technologies can we use and do we use in sportswear? Most of you guys have definitely heard of moisture wicking fabric. So what is a moisture wicking fabric? This is a fabric whereby either the yarns are hydrophobic, aka they don't mix well with water. Cotton is a good example of a type of fiber that absorbs water very readily versus polyester or nylon, which don't do so so readily, which is why we see them predominantly being used in sportswear. But we can go a step above by adding an extra surface finish on the garment to make it extra water resistant. Let's just say we're creating a ski jacket. We want to make sure that that garment is almost waterproof. You're going to be skiing and this kind of jacket is going to be getting wet. The last thing that you want is to be drenched in snow. Ultimately, you want a jacket that is going to retain heat and it's going to keep out the moisture and it's going to keep you dry throughout your entire ski season. This is what the power of adding a water resistant or waterproof surface finish comes into play. Another great example that I see is an anti-static surface finish. Why would you want to use an anti-static? Well, anyone who's ever worn a pair of nylon leggings knows that nylon in and of itself is a great conductor of electricity. It can pick up static very, very readily and that annoying feeling of just touching something, touching something metal or touching, touching someone else and connecting with that static, you get that immediate shock, that immediate burst can be very, very painful. An anti-static surface finish is a great way of reducing that risk. And honestly, in certain scenarios, this is more of a risk than on others. And this can actually potentially save lives simply by eliminating the charge and creating a static free garment that doesn't pick up any static as you move through your day to day and especially as you move through your workout. So what is the future of textile technology? We've already come this far and we've created a tremendous amount of quality fabrics that have high levels of functionality. Where does the future lie? Well, the future lies in 3D printing and in nanotechnology. When it comes to 3D printing, there's a lot of companies that are already accurately testing methods of simply printing on a shirt in its finished format. And this is going to allow you to on demand print a shirt based on specific specifications. We're not there right now, but this is a possibility for the very, very near future. Actually, as it stands right now, a ton of different factories are implementing automated cutting robots, automated sewing robots to be able to take a digital pattern that you create in programs like Clo or Marvis Designer, put them onto a flatbed, stack fabrics and immediately cut hundreds of pieces in a single laser guided cut ready to be sewn right in the next section by an automated worker. And this is going to allow you to create garments faster, more efficiently with less waste because you have computer automated technologies that are optimized for the way that the patterns are being used. And actually within true specificity of what the wearer could want. This is going to give you the opportunity to make a completely made to measure garment in the future immediately. You just input into the system your measurements, it creates the pattern for you, it cuts it automatically, and voila, you have the finished garment printed, dyed, and ready to go and ready to be worn by the wearer. Well guys, that is it. That is a wrap on this episode of Textile Technologies. And you guys have probably gathered by this episode, this world is a wild and wide world with so many different options and so many different opportunities. I highly recommend you guys stay up to date. A great resource that I'd highly recommend is the Fashionary Textile Guide, as well as the Fashionary Fashion Encyclopedia, all of which have great introductions into different textiles, different textile weaving and knitting methods, different printing methods. And it's just going to give you a great opportunity to dive into this world, to understand what are the different options available to you, and as well, motivate you to keep in check and keep looking at the industry and seeing what further developments you have. Because honestly, there's so much more to come. And just by knowing what is available to us, we can make more educated decisions as designers to create beautiful pieces that function and perform at the top of their game. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please, from the very bottom of my heart, consider smashing a massive thumbs up. It really does help us out. It keeps our team motivated to keep creating this content for you on a week-to-week -week basis. So from the very bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And until next time, stay awesome.